Now, if you have a keen filmmaking eye, you might think that I'm standing right now in front of a green screen with a set loaded in the background, but I'm not. I'm actually standing in front of a virtual production LED volume here at Dream Screen Australia. This is one studio of a few in Australia that have the capabilities of serving productions of all different sizes, from feature films to commercials to short films even and are able to place actors and talent and props and everything in any location they can dream of around the world. I'm here to discover everything that is behind what it takes to power this place, especially all the technology that you see behind me, in addition to learning more about how this whole process has become so much more accessible to filmmakers compared to the days where the technology was pioneered not that long ago when they were shooting The Mandalorian back in 2018. Virtual production is the ability of being able to put a subject in front of these LED screens and create the illusion that they're actually at, an, at a location. A modern uptake on green screen, but instead of filming someone in front of a green screen and then later on putting a background in, in post, we do it all in camera. So it's all, it all happens live. A virtual stage, like we're in now, is, is basically a giant soft light box. The idea is that in the past, with green screen, uh, when you put a, a subject in front of it, there was all this green spill. It wasn't very natural. You had to, if you wanted to make it look like that person was in an environment, you would create the composition of the background with the green screened image of the subject, but you would have to add a lot of the, the tonal qualities that you thought should be on that subject based on the location that they're in. The great thing about this technology is it just does it. It's actually about 80 to 85% of the work, you know, lighting the subject. There are no lights other than the ones that are backlighting me at the moment. It's all being done with LED screens. So we're currently sitting in our Dream Screen LED virtual production stage and we've got a LED wall behind us that is fixed at 15 metres wide by 5 metres tall. We also have a few rolling walls around here as well that we move in and out depending on the Thing that we're filming that day and each panel is made up of a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter block and they all are stacked vertically and they're made out of four modules so we can build the wall as tall as we want and swap out modules as we please. Our LED wall has a flat back and then curved sides and we've done a bit of testing to see what's most effective for the typical job that it's being used for and we found that having a longer straight line and then a bit of a curve allowed for better sound. Our rolling walls, we weren't shooting with them at their full extent if they were to be on the end of our main wall. Um, we were finding that having them as a light source that were closer in to the talent was much more preferential. Our side walls, if we're doing a simulated travel job, they're usually closer in to the vehicle or the talent. We've had times though where we've pushed our LED walls out to the very side and we've shot music videos at the full extent getting that nice wide shot. Our stage is just easily adaptable to be catered for different size productions. We can go bigger and smaller depending on the job. To crew something like this, we are working with between one to five crew members on a 2D plate job. We upscale and downscale depending on that. We've got a, a mission control that's close by to uh, the stage here, which controls all of the screens and the tech associated. With that, we usually have a technical computer operator. So they're the ones that are making sure that the walls turn on. Uh, we'll have either a 2D or a 3D artist on site. So they're the ones prepping and displaying the content. Around us we have tracking cameras and they're talking to a tracking nodule that sits on top of the camera. You're either looking at tracking um, markers, so you're getting the reflective markers and that's what they're looking at or they're looking at sensors that are sitting in, on the top of the camera. All that information, all that data of what, you know, Y and X access, all the movement it's making, panning, tilting, um, the lens information, the zoom, the focus, all that goes into Unreal Engine and inside Unreal Engine we have a virtual camera that has all the same specs the same lensing, the same sensor size. When we move the camera here with a subject in front of it and we're doing like a dolly shot, that information goes into Unreal Engine. And so the virtual camera is moving in a 3D space and then that gets spat out on the screen. And what that does is it creates the illusion of parallax, of perspective shifts. It doesn't have to be 3D. We can have stills as we've got now. We can have stock footage. 
So I'm here in the main LED volume space. So we have the LED screen at the back. On the left-hand side here and the right-hand side here, there are also two other LED panels which are able to be moved on rollers depending on the type of shot that you're looking for. And they act as a really nice fill and a backlight as well too, depending on where the actors are standing. And up at the top here on the truss, we have a couple of sky panels as well. And everything can really be adjusted and manipulated depending on the production that is needed. So it is a, such a cool space and there's a lot of of room here for activities. It is like magic. It's the, the art of distraction or the art of um, leading the eye. So if you've got like, you know, lampposts on, on, on the screen, you know, we'll add two into the studio here. So it's two real ones and then it goes into the virtual. So there is a, a like a, a fluidity from the real to the non-real. You want it to be invisible so that the audience can enjoy the story. We could have productions that come through with crews of four or five and then that could go up to a hundred. So we really cater for so many different productions. So we, we get the full spectrum of, of work coming here from short films, student films, music videos, documentaries, through to TV drama, corporates and feature films. So it's the full gamut and it's not as expensive as people might think. The technology has has become a lot more accessible. With the LED volume, you can really put yourself in any environment and the possibilities are pretty much endless. So you could be in a car park, I could be at my famous penthouse above the city, or even I could go really dystopian and take on some evil machine. Really, wherever you wanted to go, the only thing I have to move is my seat. Dream Screen is definitely accessible for every type of person, every type of filmmaker. We, we are very lucky that we've got a CEO that was helped a lot in his career um, and his growth and he has just embraced that wholeheartedly to take on to the next generation. So we welcome so many young filmmakers to get people using the tech. The more people that use the technology, the better the industry will be. I'm hoping that sometime in the next five to 10 years where they're producing very, very personal work that hasn't had to go through the fil filtration of too much middle management. That's my, as an artist, that's my dream. You know, go from the, the, you know, that, I want my brush to hit the canvas with this little, you know, madness in between. I, I want to have an idea in the morning and I want to see it finished by night. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's my end game. I'm excited by the idea of being able to imagine something and then see it actually exist soon after. If you're really interested in it and if you've got a friend who has, a, a, an, has Unreal or has got a Vive, you can play around with this at your home in, with a, just a television. Start small, you know, or do it with a, a small section of green screen. And then call up a studio like, like ours or the one at the Docklands or wherever you happen to be watching this. And I'm sure whatever country or wherever you are, there are volumes somewhere in the vicinity. You know, generally speaking, people are pretty happy to show you around. So, you know, go in and, and, and offer yourself up. Now there's always been plenty of debate about what involvement technology has when it comes to the future of filmmaking in both a negative way and a positive way. But the way I see it, technology like this makes it more accessible to any filmmaker out there. And the really cool thing is that that exact technology used on those massive well-known productions can just be around the corner today. So I'm really curious, I wonder what this is gonna look like in a few years time. Maybe I can go to my local hardware store and pick up one of these for a thousand dollars. Wouldn't that be pretty cool?